Inside Edition with Deborah Norville. The cruise industry is on the hot seat. Congress is even holding hearings about crimes on cruise ships. And critics of the industry attribute a lot of the incidents to out-of-control drinking of booze on board. So we wanted to see for ourselves what goes on. We sent investigative correspondent Matt Mahar on a four-day cruise. Here's his disturbing report. You won't see video like this in any cruise line commercial. Passengers passed out in the ship's disco. Others stumbling back to their rooms, barely able to walk, or falling down, completely drunk. Passengers having to be carried back onto the ship after drunken excursion trips. We shot this video aboard Royal Caribbean's Grandeur of the Seas last month. We boarded in Tampa for a cruise to Cozumel, Mexico. We wanted to see just how responsible a popular cruise line is when it comes to serving alcohol. As soon as we boarded, we were descended on by a legion of cocktail waiters. Thank you. You sure you don't want one? The hard selling of drinks keeps going for hours, right up to the mandatory lifeboat drill. But the real drinking occurs when the cruise gets underway. On the pool deck, waiters relentlessly push the drink of the day for about $6 a glass. But sometimes, you don't even need a glass to have another. And look what happens when these passengers, who are ordering drinks from the hot tub, start diving into the pool that is only five feet deep. It's surrounded by no diving signs. But it goes on for more than an hour before anyone from the ship says a word. Uh, probably in the last hour, I've had about 30 beers. 30 beers? Probably in the last hour, yeah. We encounter this 20-year-old college student coming out of a bathroom after having just thrown up. He returned to the pool deck where we watched him do what's called shotguns, punching holes in cans of beer and sucking them down. Beer after beer after beer. He appeared to be very intoxicated. But the same waiter continued to bring him buckets of beer and then even timed him to see how fast he could guzzle it down. I want you to count to five, all right? Yes, let me give you a bite. A family seated nearby left the pool deck in disgust. Ten beers He's gonna die. Yeah, you need to stop. A short time later, he urinates through his bathing suit right on the pool deck. <laughs> then watch how he washes himself off. It's out of control. Randy Jakes is a former police detective and has worked as a manager of security on four different cruise lines. Although he's never worked for Royal Caribbean, he says the type of drunken behavior we've witnessed is an industry-wide problem. How out of control do you have to get before they'll kick you off a ship? Shouldn't they be able to draw a line somewhere? No, there's no line. It's Again, remember we go back to the basics. It's all about the revenue. I certainly don't promote excess drinking. Royal Caribbean wouldn't agree to do an interview for this story. But I talked to Captain Bill Wright, a senior official with the company, in January, before we went on the cruise. Back then, Royal Caribbean was eager to get their message out about the mysterious disappearance of 26-year-old George Smith. Smith and his beautiful wife Jennifer were on a honeymoon cruise last summer when it's believed he either fell or was thrown overboard from his stateroom balcony. The only thing that everyone agrees on is that the newlyweds were drinking heavily. Is your company, is your industry doing enough to make sure people aren't overserved? Of course, it's in our interest to do so. Well, why is it in your interest to do so? You make a lot of money because off the sale of alcohol. There is a group of people, and sometimes there are, that are getting out of hand, that have had one or two or three too many. We intervene, we, we, we go to them and we put them on notice. And, and we certainly stop serving them. But that's not what happened on our cruise. Especially in the ship's disco, where we found young people passed out everywhere. The problem is particularly bad in March and April, when a lot of students are on spring break. This 21-year-old told us he'd been drinking all day. Uh, eight in an hour. Eight in an hour? Yeah. We later found him passed out on the piano, and we notified a security guard. Passed out at the piano over here. He has no shoes on, and I think Barry and Pops have made it. His head is on the piano, and he's been there quite a while. The guard didn't seem too concerned, and barely did a thing. So you think he's fine? Fine. We had to help him back to his room, and on the last night of the cruise, he told us he was amazed that the bartenders kept serving him as drunk as he was. 
On this night, when the disco lets out, the passengers are literally bouncing off the walls. This girl had to be carried back to her cabin by her friends. And look at this. Right before it closes, the cleaning staff puts barf bags on the stairs and railings right by the disco exit. The disco to the ninth floor, you have to spread out barf bags. Yeah. Again, Royal Caribbean refused to do an interview for this report. But in a statement, the company said our bartenders and waiters watch for overconsumption. When overconsumption is suspected, bartenders and waiters will take appropriate action. But on our cruise, listen to what this bartender said after he had served these passengers, who had already been drinking, three extremely potent drinks, one right after another. But even worse, we watched as these two boys, 114 and 116, walked around the ship day after day with drinks in their hands. The alcohol was usually purchased by this 18-year-old who would turn around and hand it to his younger brother in full view of the bartender. And the bartender sees it. The bartender sees everything. It's all about the revenue, the tip, pushing the alcohol, and remember, they're guests. Don't interfere with the guests. Let the guests have a good time. In their statement, Royal Caribbean maintains their alcohol policies are similar to those of bars and restaurants on land. But they say when a person wants to drink too much, they often find ways to get around procedures designed to prevent that. Tomorrow we'll bring you the second part of Matt's investigation and you'll see how the booze keeps flowing when passengers leave the ship on excursion trip sponsored by the cruise line. Some passengers are so drunk they have to be dragged back to the ship.